What's up my fellow small business supporters? I'm Savvy. Welcome back to Savvy Writes Books, the channel where we talk about books and business. And because I run my own business creating books and because this channel is most known for reviewing business related books, I'm always searching for new nonfiction to read. Specifically those by and about women in business. As a result, sometimes you guys will send me lists you find on social media that have things like, I don't know, top 10 best books that every woman in business must read. Number 69 will shock you. Sometimes I've read most of the books on these lists and sometimes I've read none of them. But regardless, I usually have opinions about these lists when I see them. So today, I thought I would review some of these books every woman in business must read type of lists and let you guys know what I agree with and what I disagree with and what I might add to my to read lists for the future. But because this is my video, before we delve into these lists, I want to talk for just a moment about my own experience as a businesswoman in 2022. I have a lot of goals for this year, especially with growth for my business itself, for Forever Home Friends, for myself as an author, for Your Morning Guru, for all of that. And one thing I've been really proud of specifically lately is how I was able to consolidate everything into one website, which is SavvyWritesBooks.com, the website that I revealed at the end of 2021. And that's also why I'm really grateful that the builder I used for this website has chosen to sponsor today's video. Today's video is sponsored by Zyro, which is the platform that I used to build this website. Right now is also a really good time for Zyro to be sponsoring me on this video because they're having their special New Year's deal right now. As you guys know, New Year's, especially for me, is all about new beginnings and new projects. I'm working on so many new videos, new stuff for my morning show, working on some new books and things like that. And if you're shopping in the new year, it's also a time for post-holiday sales. Right now, Zyro is offering a limited time special bundle deal. So if right now is a time that you're looking to build your own website for yourself as a business owner, an author, a musician, whatever type of work you do, this might be a good time to take a look at that if that's something that you're in. For the New Year's deal right now, you can get an exclusive discount, including a custom domain and four months free with any yearly plan. And you can access that if you use the code SAVVY or check out the link in my description below. I had a really easy time building my website with Zyro. I thought that it was really helpful how they had drag and drop editing options. I thought it was really nice how I had so many customizable options when building my store and being able to create separate sections for the different types of merch that I have listed on my store and things like that. And they've always been fantastic at customer support as well whenever I've had any questions about anything. So if you're like me and you are not necessarily tech savvy, even though I am savvy, this may be a good option for you for building a website. Again, if you'd like to check that out, you can use my code savvy or you can click on the link in my description below to check out that deal. Thank you again to Zyro for sponsoring today's video. I'm very proud of the work that I made with this website builder. Now, let's get back to the lists of books that women in business are supposedly supposed to read. We're going to start with one that one of you guys sent me on Instagram that I found really funny because I'd read so many of the books on this list and I was like, I don't know about this. So the first thing I got was that someone DM'd me on Instagram sending me a screenshot that they had gotten this ad for on their own Instagram feed from this app called Retail App. And it had this list of every woman should read these books. So I wanted to look at what retail app was first of all, because I'd never heard of it before. So I went and checked that out on Instagram as well. This is all I could find for retail app. It looks like they have a lot of followers, but they have not a ton of engagement. So it's possible that they bought some of these followers. I'm not sure, but it's basically an Instagram page for entrepreneurship advice and uh, it recommends a lot of business books and things like that. So let's check out what they think every woman should read. First book on the list, Girl, wash your, ass. Girl, wash your Face. You guys know how I feel about Girl, Wash Your Face. That's in fact probably, I think the first businesswoman book review that I did on this channel all the way back in 2018 when this channel first started. If you've been on this channel for any amount of time, you I don't need to tell you how I feel about Girl, Wash Your Face. Number four I wanted to look at as well, which is You Are a Badass. Guys, I did a really long review of You Are a Badass. You remember how I feel about Jen Sincero, who is a straight woman who sleeps with women. That's partially an 
inside joke and partially actually the title of one of her books. You guys know how I feel about how she thinks that everything you want in life you have to manifest for yourself and that our minds are like working on weird frequencies attracting things. It's all bullshit. All she does is like new age bullshit. None of it is real. None of it is practical and is all just dripping with her own privilege that she's had from never having to suffer through real poverty or anything like that. Especially you are a badass at making money where Jen talks about how she used to be the brokest person ever despite her yearly childhood European vacations and also talks about how the reason she was so broke was that she just wasn't thinking hard enough about how she wanted money and she was subconsciously tricking herself into not really wanting it. That's not the reason most people are broke, Jen. You are a badass. The whole You Are a Badass series I would completely throw out. I love how number five is Girl Wash Your Face. We've got Girl Wash Your Face on this list twice. How did that happen? I have not read the 80-20 principle, so I'm gonna have to check out some of these. How to Win Friends, I believe that's How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. That's actually one of the books that we're probably going to read for Your Morning Guru in upcoming weeks. We wanna try some of the like OG self-help book type of stuff, you know, How to Win Friends and Influence People. The power of thinking, all of those from the original gurus from way back in the day. You know, the the Napoleon Hills and the Norman Vincent Peels and the Dale Carnegies and all of those people who most of them were also probably scammers. So I'll have to get back to you guys on that one. Haven't read Radical Acceptance or Dear Girls. 12 Rules for Life, that is Jordan Peterson's book. I found this book incredibly boring. Uh, I, I did a brief review of it when I did my tier ranking chart of tier ranking business and self-help books. 12 Rules for Life, I didn't like that much. One reason was I just thought the writing was not interesting. I think that Jordan Peterson is someone who uses a lot of words to say a topic he could condense, but then doesn't expand enough on what he means in the in the topics that he does talk about. I understand, I don't have a problem with his target audience being straight men. If straight men are the majority of his target audience, that's fine, dude. Like every book has its own target audience and that's fine. I don't, but the book was kind of marketed as for everybody. So when I listened to it as someone who's the opposite of a straight man, I was kind of like, I don't really understand what you're talking about here. This book had a lot of like gender essentialist beliefs in it, meaning that women are a certain way because of biology and men are a certain way because of biology. And I'm not here to say, I'm not a professional biologist and I'm sure he, he as someone with a PhD has more research on some of these topics than I do. However, because I have a lot of friends who are trans, a lot of friends who are non-binary, and I have a lot of friends who just exist outside of these gender roles, even if they are a cisgender person, and, you know, like me. I want to know more about where this comes from, especially because the majority of people I know this doesn't apply to. How does this happen? Am I just existing in circles on the fringe of society? I don't want to discount his work as a whole, knowing that a lot of people were helped by it. But when I listen to it, I see something that I also know a lot of people who were directly hurt by it. So it's a little bit like, I don't know what to do with this. Based on my interpretation of the book itself, I think this book was a big waste of money. Basically, it is a book that really should have been just a series of blog posts, which is what it started as. It started as him writing series of blog posts and then his blog posts on, uh, was it Quora? He was like answering people's questions online and his posts were getting popular. And then he was like, oh, I should do this as a book instead. Uh, and the book is just filled with so much extra stuff where he goes on these really long tangents and a lot of pieces of it are him just trying to be like, look at how much I know. Here's the chapter about it's important to take care of ourselves, how most people are when they get medicine for their pets, they're more likely to remember to give their pets the medicine than they are to take their own medicine. So I thought that was good advice to remember, but then the chapter was like an hour long because he started going into all of this history and all of these biblical allegories and telling all these stories from the Bible and talking about how that connected to this and that. And I was like, okay, dude, I got your point, you know? So I think it's a book that has some relatively good advice filled with just a lot of, look how many facts I have, look how much I can know. And I also thought that the book was a little bit, this is what I've talked about before, I thought it was a little bit, I don't know if sexist is too loaded of a term. I've heard about eat that frog. I believe eating the frog refers to like, 
doing like the first thing you need to do when you wake up in the morning is eat a frog because otherwise you'll you want to get the hardest thing each day out like it's not literally telling you to eat a frog but it's an analogy they use to say first thing you need to do you need to you need to front load like the hardest tasks of your day in the morning a lot of people say it's important to get your workouts done in the morning because that way uh you will get it out of the day and won't procrastinate on it i personally can't do that because workouts make me tired and then i want to go to sleep during the day so i work out at night where i can go to sleep right afterwards other people say working out at night elevates their heart rate and it makes them unable to slow themselves down and go to sleep I, that's just a thing you got to figure out for yourself the power of habit is one i've been wanting to read because i i did read atomic habits and i thought that that book was really good so i'll have to wait and see about that one hashtag girl boss I did read and I reviewed that one in my business and self-help books tier ranking chart. I had mixed feelings on it. I thought that there were some parts that were interesting. I thought it was an interesting story to hear about Sofia Amoruso and the way that she created the company Nasty Gal. I thought it was an interesting story that was fairly inspirational. I thought she had some good advice about like what she looks for in applicants for jobs to work for her. Looking back, she kind of seems like a shitty boss, though, because she would talk about how, like, oh, I don't like when people say, I can't do this, that's not my job, and she would try to, like, have people work work in things that weren't in their job description, like, because the company needed it. It seemed like a little bit of toxic startup culture in there where she was kind of overworking people. At least that's where, that's the vibe that I got. And then, um, on top of that, she talks very proudly about her past as a thief. I understand that if you, some people steal things out of necessity. I'm not here to shame people for having had a past where you stole things, because I, in a lot of cases that's out of people's control. But as a lot of people in the Goodreads reviews for this book pointed out, she really doesn't recognize that what she was, what she's able to joke about doing so easily, which is like sweet talking a cashier and like sneaking things out while like engaging them in conversation and like all the things she used to do to steal things is really only things that like a young conventionally attractive white woman could get away with. Like specifically that group of people, anyone else would be uh, targeted right away. She like completely ignores like that a lot of people get racially profiled doing a lot of the shit that she was doing. So it just so seemed a little bit like she didn't see the whole picture. Oh, and there was the weird section on sigil magic. I think maybe I actually just don't like this book. The next one it says is the law of attraction, which I'm assuming they mean the secret. Uh, the secret, I've, I, I do not like the secret. I just finished this book last week because this book I was reading for, once again, for Your Morning Guru, where we did law of attraction week. <sighs> the law of attraction is basically stating that if you think good thoughts, the universe will magnetically attract good thoughts to you. Let me, let me get this out of the way right up front. This book is offensive and harmful to society. Now, I've had a lot of people who have told me, but Savvy, the law of attraction really helped me when I was in a difficult situation. The being, thinking positive and seeing the good in things was really helpful to me. And you know what? That is awesome. In fact, I often have a really positive attitude too. I think that there's really nothing wrong with being positive. The problem is that the secret as a book is not just about having a positive attitude, and it's not about motivating yourself to do some positive change for yourself. It is about magnetically attracting events to you through brainwave frequencies. I do not like The Secret. I do not like books about the law of attraction. I think they're absolute bullshit. There's no proof for that. It's absolute bullshit, and it's incredibly victim blamey because then people ask things in The Secret like, oh, okay, well, what about people who have, who's, family was destroyed in a genocide? Or what about people who have lost their homes in hurricanes or tornadoes? Or what about someone who, you know, was the victim of murder or something like that? People will say, okay, were those people not thinking positively enough? Were those people, like, did they attract that to themselves? And the, the book The Secret literally says, like, yeah, subconsciously they must have because everything is attracted to you. And it's like, it is the most bullshit. It is absolutely disgusting, harmful way of thinking. So if by the law of attraction they mean the book The Secret, which is about the law of attraction, hard no, do not read it. So shout out to this list that has Girl Wash Your Face on there twice. Let's take a look at some more. So here we have an article on BookBub called 24 of the Best Business Books for Women. Whether you're an aspiring CEO or a visionary entrepreneur, take the business world by storm with our list of the best business books for women. From Sheryl Sandberg to Rachel Hollis, 
Oh, I don't know about that. There's something here for every woman who wants to make her mark on the professional world. The future is female and your time is now. Discover the books that will look great in your new corner office complete with publisher's descriptions. First one on here is Girl Boss. We've got hashtag Girl Boss once again, just like on the previous list. I'm not gonna review Girl Boss again because I just basically reviewed it. Uh, I do think it has a pretty cool cover though. I will give it that. I think that Sophia's style is really cool, which makes sense because she ran a fashion company. And I was a little sad that the Netflix series was canceled so soon because even though the Netflix series is like not that true to the book, has a lot of things changed and like also doesn't show, like it shows some of the entrepreneurship struggles, but it also like skips over a lot of things and it's just like, here, she starts something and now there's orders. Like, where did they come from, you know? Oh, and also it was really like biphobic. Like they had this one bisexual girl and she was just like this huge slutty sexual predator. She was only in it for like 10 minutes, but like it really, really bothered me. I think sometimes I look at the past with rose colored glasses. Here I am being like, yeah, it was good. I loved it, except for how much I hated it. The next book on the list is Lean In, Women Women Work and The Will to Lead by Sheryl Sandberg. A lot of people may know Sheryl Sandberg as the Chief Operating Officer of Facebook. Again, this was a book that I had majorly mixed feelings on. When I read this book, it was a couple years ago during my times looking for books to read to be like to learn more about becoming a female business owner and to learn more about like resources for women in business who are starting their own companies and how to get my own company off the ground. And this just really wasn't the book for that. So I'm, I'm not going to blame Sheryl Sandberg for that because the book was really more about getting promoted and moving up within someone else's company or becoming a CEO of an existing company. It wasn't really about how to get your business off the ground. I do think that the book should have talked a little more about being targeted at moms. The reason for that is that I'm not a mom. I don't have any plans to become a mom. And so much of the book focused on balancing parenting with your work and trying to work like 80 hour weeks while also raising kids, which is a struggle, dude. That's a struggle. I, I don't know how some people do it, but the advice like wasn't really that relevant to me because it wasn't something that I was doing. And if the book was like a book about being a working mom or being a mom in the corporate world, I think that would be a fantastic book, but it was just targeted at all women. But like, and even if it's targeted at all women and there's like a little bit of stuff about being a mom in the workforce, like the majority of people do end up having kids one day. So I could see why that could still be okay, but just so much of it was targeted at having kids and raising kids while running a business, or not running a business, and raising kids while working for a company and things like that. And I was just like, ah, a lot of this doesn't apply to me. And what was annoying was the one part where it did mention women without kids. It was mentioned in the context of, it's not fair to make women without kids pick up your slack at work, which I agree with. Because as one girl pointed out at this seminar she was at, how is she ever supposed to have free time to go meet someone and be able to start her family? And it's like, well, sure, but also you shouldn't put your extra work on the women who don't have kids, not just because she needs to be able to go have kids, but because like, that's not fair regardless. Like, what about women who just don't ever want to have kids? I don't know. There, there wasn't really any addressing of that, but I do think for people who are struggling with the systemic sexism that goes on within the corporate world surrounding being a mom and also working, we all know about the stereotypes of like, some employers will consider a, a man with kids, oh, what a good family man, he really has to provide for his family, versus a mom with kids, like, oh, she's probably gonna leave t early to be with her kids, she's probably not going to commit as much, right? There's still stereotypes surrounding those things that employers impose upon people. And it's a reason that it's sometimes a struggle for women to get promoted to the next level and things like that. And I think this book really did do a good job delving into that and using a lot of research, a lot of studies. It used, you know, a lot of background research. It had a really thick note section at the back. She cited all her sources. I appreciated that. So it really is good research if you want to look into some of the systemic issues of why women struggle to move up in corporate, in corporate America. But if that's not what you're looking to learn, then it really isn't going to offer you that much. I have not read Power Up. Let's take a look at this and see if I'm interested in it. Pioneering Silicon Valley entrepreneur and investor Magdalena Yesel came to the United States in 1976 with two suitcases and $43, blind to the challenges she would face as a woman and immigrant in Silicon Valley. Today, she is best known as the first investor and a founding board member of Salesforce, the now multi-billion dollar company that ushered in the era of cloud-based computing. 
Oh, this sounds like a really interesting story. Yeah, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll add that to my TBR. That sounds good. So the next one, I also haven't read The Defining Decade. Our 30 is the new 20 culture tells us the 20-something years don't matter. Some say they are a second adolescence. Other call, others call them an emerging adulthood. Dr. Meg Jay, a clinical psychologist, argues that 20-somethings have been caught in a swirl of hype and misinformation, much of which has trivialized what is actually the most defining decade of adulthood. I don't think I'll read that because I'm 29, so I think this is just going to give me an existential crisis about whatever I missed out on in my 20s that I should have gotten done already. I'm not in the mood for existential depression today. Oh, and then of course the list, ha of course, of course it has to have, of course it has to have Girl Stop Apologizing. We couldn't have it without Girl Stop Apologizing. I did a long ass review of Girl Stop Apologizing. Many of you may have found my channel for that review. It's where I was baking cupcakes in the kitchen while reviewing this book, while making boxed cupcakes because of the way that Rachel Hollis shades the boxed cake in this book. I will say I've appreciated the way that Rachel has kind of taken a shift in her career after, you know, the divorce and after things seeming like they were falling apart. She seems to be kind of just doing her own thing now. Uh, I haven't been following her much because she's doing a lot of the dumb manifesting BS that I see like Jen Sincero and them doing and I'm like, I'm just not into that. I just don't like it. So I haven't been following her as much. I really didn't like this book. However, in it, Rachel does talk about how she got a boob job and I will be getting my boob job in a couple weeks. In part, I guess I could, well, insurance is covering it, but if insurance weren't covering it, I would say that the ad revenue I made from the video <laughs> reviewing this book would be what I would be using to pay for it so that I could be like, oh yeah, you bragged about your boob job, you body shamed me for my boobs being so massive, well now guess what, I'm gonna use that money to pay for my boob job, I keep saying boob job like I'm getting like breast implants or just like breast lift or something, I'm getting breast reduction, I'm getting my, I'm going from a size 34H to a 34C and y'all I cannot wait it is next month. While, while I think that Girls Stop Apologizing in theory could have been an interesting study on how women are more likely to apologize for things or more likely to give up their dreams or things like that you know using history, historical examples, research from the past, studies about how women are more often discouraged you know using actual facts and things like that. Most of this book you watch my full review if you want to see the full review. I'll link it up in the cards. But most of this book is just Rachel humble bragging about everything. I haven't read this one either, How Remarkable Women Lead. However, right here, it does talk about one of the included op uh, one of the included stories, how Andrea Jung, CEO of Avon, avoided a downward spiral when the company turned down by firing herself on Friday and re-emerging on Monday as the new turnaround CEO. Avon is one of the oldest MLM companies, so I don't really trust shit about Avon, unless this is talking about, like, way back in the day, like, we're talking about, like, a hundred plus years ago when Avon was only a door-to-door -door sales company and didn't have the recruitment structure yet, but still. Anyone who's treating Avon legit, I'm not sure I trust. Have you guys read any of the books on the lists that I covered? If so, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you've read any of the books that I said sounded good and like I want to add to my reading list, let me know if you've read them and if you like them and if you recommend them because I've got a lot more books to read. In fact, right now I'm working on two really big book reviews, which is why this week's video is a little bit on the shorter side because I'm working on some really, really in-depth book reviews right now. One is for The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I know that that's a self-help book people talk about all the time. Also, some people have told me that it's Mormon propaganda. I'm still working through it, so I don't know my final decision yet, but there will be an in-depth review on that. The other really big in-depth review I'm working on right now is for this book, Ben Shapiro's The Authoritarian Moment. There's a lot going on in this book, and I've actually been streaming on Twitch my process of scripting the review for this and doing all the research and checking all his sources and things like that. So if you'd like to see the process of me doing an in-depth book review and getting the script ready behind the scenes, the, the script for this is going to be like 40, 50 pages long. It's already really long. Then you can follow me on Twitch when I go live occasionally to work on that. Uh, that's Savvy Writes book, same as here. Thank you so, so much to everyone who has supported me on Patreon. My Patreon supporters who give $5 a month and up are all listed in the description below and they have their own things linked there. So that's one of the rewards for being a $5 a month patron is you can link your own social media site or website or your business or your channel or whatever you want to promote. You can promote things in my description. So check out what they've promoted in my description as well. Please go ahead and do that. Once again, thank you so much to Zyro for sponsoring this video. If you want to take a look at their New Year's deal, you can check out my description below for that as well. I will see you guys again next Friday for a bigger book review video. But in the meantime, please don't forget to support small businesses and have a fantastic 
fantastic start to your weekend. Bye. Get you some nuts. There was lots of memes. Makes me wonder if I should take up lesbianism. Chicago. You guys asked for it.